Okay guys, this is another history book and it's called If You Lived with the Cherokee. Now, who remembers what the Cherokee are, who the Cherokee are? They are the tribe of Indians or Native Americans that live in our area and they still live here. A lot of them live out on a reservation called um, the Cherokee Reservation and that means that the government actually gives them land because we took so much of their land a long time ago. Each tribe has a different name and, and this is the, the tribe that lives around here is called the Cherokee. And there's also a tribe, remember where the, the Mayflower landed? I think they were called the Wampanoag Indians. That's the YouTube uh, video that you guys like so much with the little Indian girls with the little marks around their eyes. But the ones that lived here are called the Cherokee. Now this is a little bit of a long book so I think I'm gonna break it up into a couple sections, okay? All right, you guys see this United States map? States map? See that green part? That's where the Cherokee live. Well, actually, that's where they used to live. There's a smaller part in the same area now where they live now. But they can live anywhere they want to. They can they can go anywhere in the country they want, and, just, they, and they do. Who are the Cherokee? The Cherokee call themselves Anayuwiga. <laughs> don't know if I said that right. Meaning the principal people. Long ago, they came from the Northeast, home of the Iroquois-speaking tribes, the Huron, the Sinka, the Cayuga, the Onia, the Onodega, and the Mohawk nations. When the Cherokee migrated south to the Great Smoky Mountains, they kept the language of their ancestors. Over a thousand years, the Cherokee enjoyed mountain homeland. They believed that it was the center of the whole world. They pictured it as an island hanging by four cords from the sky. Back in those days, they didn't have things like satellites and um, planes and things like that. So everybody had a different idea of what the world actually looked like. Remember back, um, back in these days, they also in Europe, they thought that the world was flat when it's actually round. Then men across the ocean came to the Cherokee land. Remember who those people were? They were the pilgrims. Some of them were nice and some of them weren't. An explorer from Spain named Hernan Hernando de Soto was the first person from Europe to meet the Cherokee. That was in the year 1540. It was a very long time ago, over 400 years. De Soto and his men were looking for gold in the mountains. Later, people from England and, and France came to settle in the area. Cherokee life changed as the Native Americans began to trade with the new settlers. There was stuff that the Indians made, like beautiful beadwork and leather that the, that the people from Europe wanted. They ne had never seen anything so pretty. What was it like to be a Cherokee 200 years ago? What'd your home be like? Would you get to play? What clothes would you wear? This book will tell you what it, what it would be like if you lived with the Cherokee. Look at the timeline. Line. The part in color shows the years this book is about. 1740 all the way up to 1837. That's about 100 years. If you were Cherokee, the color of your skin might be light tan to dark tan. And some of you guys might have Cherokee Indian blood in you anyway. Your hair would be black and straight. You would be slim because of the games you played and the work that you did. If you were a girl, you rarely cut your hair. For the Cherokee, long hair was beautiful hair, and when your hair was long enough, you tied it up. Boys and men shaved or plucked their hair so that only a small patch was left on top. See that little boy? He just has hair on the very top of his head. Oops. Sorry. Okay. What? What did you wear? So remember, we're pretending that we we're with the Indians or that we are one of them. I'm asking these questions. Before the new settlers came, your clothes were made from animal skins. In the summer, children under the age of eight didn't have to worry about clothes. They wore nothing in the warm months. Oh! So if you were under eight, which all of you are, you wouldn't have worn any clothes. Men and older boys wore deer skin shirts and breech couts, something like that. A breech couch was a band of deer skin that hung from the belt at the waist. Women and older girls wore deer skin skirts wrapped around their waists. In winter, men and boys 
wore animal skins such as bear, panther, beaver, with the fur on the inside for the warmth. They wore moccasins on their feet and long deerskin leggings. Women and girls wore skirts made of buffalo calf skin with the hair on the inside. They wore deerskin shirts and decorated with small turkey feathers. This sounds pretty cool, huh? Women and girls wore jewelry around their necks, wrists, and ankles. You made your own jewelry from shells and seeds, bones, animal teeth, stones, and feathers. Men liked to wear armbands of leather or copper and hair decorations such as feathers. Cherokee people also used shell, shell beads, stone discs, porcupine quills, feathers, and animal hair to decorate their clothes. Cherokee clothes changed when the Cherokee began to trade with the new white, white settlers. Shirts and skirts were made from cloth instead of animal skins. Glass beads from Spain and France were used to decorate clothing. Who was in your family? You would live with your mother and father, brothers and sisters, and your mother's parents, but you would belong to an even larger family called a clan. There were seven clans. Bird, wolf, deer, wild potato, that's a funny one, long hair, blue, and paint. Members of each clan lived in every village. Your mother and father belonged to different clans. You would be part of your mother's clan, not your father's. If your mother was a bird and your father was a paint, you would be a bird. Your relatives were your mother's family. Her mother, grandmother, aunts, sisters, brothers, and cousins. How did people get married? To get married, your two families exchanged special gifts. The groom, that's the man, would send deer meat to the girl's family. This proved that he was a good hunter and would always provide his wife with food. The bride gave him an ear of corn to show that she would tend to her gardening and she could prepare good food. After the wedding ceremony, the man, the man moved into the woman's house with her family. To get divorced, a Cherokee woman had only to put her husband's things outside the door of their house, and that meant he have to, had to move away. Oh, my goodness. It was forbidden to marry someone from your own clan. You had to marry somebody from a different one. How did you get your name? You might have several different names during your life. First, your parents named you. That's just like they do with us, too. Four to seven days after your birth, your family held a special ceremony. That was when you got your name. You might be named for something special, such as your smile or your eyes or your smile. When you were older, you would add a name or change your name. You might pick your new name to show something important you could do. Or you could choose a name to show how you did something difficult or dangerous, or to describe something about you. If you were a good swimmer, you might wish to be named Ayuni, which means swimmer. And if you were a happy person, you might wish to be called Ayoka, she who brings happiness. If you are beautiful, you might want to be named Kamama, which is butterfly. A good hunter might choose the name Kanati, lucky hunter. As you grew older, you could change your name again. That sounds kind of fun. If you guys could choose a name, what would you choose? What would your house be like? You would live in two different houses with your large family. One house would be your home in the hot summer months. Your winter home would be nearby. 